Hello and welcome to your own personal brand spanking new, bright and shiny, it's all miney video, the very best of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Over the next 90 minutes, we're going to relive some of the drama and the emotion that has made Who Wants to Be a Millionaire the most successful quiz show the world has ever seen. And there have been a lot of those great moments since we first came on air back in September 1998. Now, after all, it's the TV programme that got strangers talking to each other again. Emptied pubs that didn't have TVs in them, and filled pubs that did. You're going to see people winning fortunes, people losing fortunes, and me losing about 20 years of my life. But before we see some of those highlights, first let's give you an exclusive look behind the scenes. Now, I bet you've often wondered what it takes to make this little programme. Well, now you can find out, as we look at a day in the life of who wants to be a millionaire. Hey you guys, we have got super exciting news. Backstreet Boys Show What You're Made Of is going to come back to theaters very soon for one special night. May 13th. Mark it on your calendars. Special night, special event, May 13th. And plus, this time we've included a live acoustic performance that we recorded in London. So if you missed it the first time, or if you want to see it again, all you got to do is go to fathomevents.com for your tickets. May 13th. See you on the big screen. <laughs> Hi Jennifer, Lionel Richie here. I understand you're the biggest of the biggest of the largest fans. I want to tell you I love you so much and hope to see you very soon. Congratulations on your little uh, bambino. Hi, this is Elton. I'm in New York. I've just announced my farewell global tour, which I'm very excited about. Um, it'll take three years. It starts in 2018 in September in Pennsylvania. For more information, go to eltonjohn.com um, and sign up for tickets. And I'll see you on the road. Bye. The show of ours does seem to have given rise to a whole new crop of catchphrases all over the country. Kids and adults alike are saying things like, is that your final answer? Can I phone a friend? And will you take us to Disneyland if you win, Daddy? The one that rings truest with me, though, is the one I feel compelled to say whenever a contestant is struggling on a particular question. And it's usually a question that seems fairly simple, one that they really should know. But they don't, because we all have little gaps in our knowledge, and we all have weak spots. And remember, some questions are, altogether now, only easy if you know the answer. Now, you might not believe this, but in spite of that last lot, when we reach show 200, we are given away well in excess of £20 million. Imagine that. It's enough money to pay Manchester United's wages bill for nearly a whole fortnight. There are many things in life that can challenge and even ruin the most beautiful of relationships. You and your mate both falling in love with the same girl, supporting different football teams, discovering your prospective father-in-law as an estate agent, little things like that. Now, at Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, we came up with a new one, one that puts a strain on the strongest of relationships. It's called Phone a Friend. And for some reason, we always seem to get a lot more men than women on this show, and opinions divided on why this is. Are men better at general knowledge? Are they keener to push themselves forward, more competitive, or what? When I asked one woman in the audience during commercial break one night uh, why she thought we didn't have as many women on, she very wittily replied, it's because you don't want to give away any money. It's not true, but very funny answer, if you're female. Without a doubt, women have given us many of our very best moments. And I think I've worked out why that is. It's because they're far more expressive, they aren't afraid to show their emotions, they're less self-conscious, they're less inhibited. That's right, they're as mad as Hatters. Now, it's not just here in the UK that Who Wants to Be a Millionaire has been such a huge success. Millionaire mania has conquered the world. It's been shown in over a hundred countries. Although the format, the set and the music are exactly the same, each country might add its own little refinement. For instance, in Italy, the show's called Who Wants to Be a Multi-Multi-Multi-Millionaire. In Monte Carlo, it's Who Cares, We're Already Millionaires. And in Kazakhstan, it's What the Hell is a Millionaire Anyway? But wherever it appears in the world, you can be sure that people love this great British export. Of course, it would be great to win a million, but that's not the main reason most people come on to who wants to be a millionaire. They wouldn't say no to a million, of course. But what most contestants are hoping for is money that could really make a big difference. A thousand pounds has given people the chance to take their family abroad for the very first time. £4,000 has cleared the debts of someone who's been living in the shadow of them for years. We've even had people who've come onto the show unemployed and left it 20 minutes later, retired. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire is the quiz show that really, truly can change your life. When a contestant first arrives at the show, we've no idea who they are or what to expect. 
And speaking of expecting, all the contestants who sat in this seat have gone through every possible emotion. But it has been worth it because they've won an average of over £50,000 each. And it can be anyone sitting here. They can be from anywhere. We've had them all. We've had pilots and plumbers, surveyors and students, firefighters and fitness instructors. We even had a tax inspector. Now, I can tell you that was an extraordinary experience. When he used his Ask the Audience, he got a huge majority vote for one answer. But being a tax man, were they trying to stitch him up like a kipper? No matter who the contestant, no matter how confident they are when they first arrive, win fastest finger first and actually get into this hot seat, once they're here they'll always find that one pig of a question that comes out of nowhere and stops them in their tracks. And that's possibly where you might have heard me asking, is that your final answer? Yes, making your mind up can be so difficult, can't it? Now, on a show where there's so much at stake and people are playing for potentially life-changing amounts of money, you're inevitably going to get a great deal of knuckle-whitening, gut-wrenching tension. And what better way to relieve it than a laugh? Now, we all like laughing at that small percentage of the audience who think something completely daft like Alfred the Great was a chimney sweep or an escargo is a unit of currency in Portugal. But best of all is when the contestants laugh all the way to the bank. Now, they say that one of the secrets to a good marriage is to trust each other, to share your thoughts, your fears and your doubts. Here's another one. Think very, very, very carefully about coming onto one of our Who Wants to Be a Millionaire couple shows. We started doing these at Christmas 2000, and whether any of our couples were still together for Christmas 2001 is really anybody's guess. If you think coming on the show on your own is stressful, try coming on with your other half and disagreeing on a £250,000 question. Couples who play together stay together, they say. Yes. Or then again, no. Maybe. Mm, sometimes. Coming on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire puts that theory to the ultimate test. Over three years of doing Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, I have gone through every emotion known to man. I've had palpitations as contestants somehow got to just £500, miraculously in a couple of cases. I've agonised as they struggled to get the £32,000 question right and I've rejoiced when they got a million. And when it's all said and done, this show is all about making someone a millionaire. And if you'd like to join that elite, let me give you a few tips to help you get there. Study hard. Remember every fact you've ever learnt. Keep your cool and sit in this seat for fastest finger first, seat number eight. It's probably the luckiest seat in Britain. Now, by one of those amazing coincidences that seem to crop up all the time on this show, our first two millionaires, Judith Keppel and David Edwards, both sprang from here after they'd won fastest finger first. And 20 minutes of fantastic television later, they left the hot seat each with a check for one million pounds. Now, we shared some great moments in the past, and I know there are more, many, many more to come, because this is the show that has it all. Excitement, tension, drama, and emotion. And maybe that's why it's the biggest quiz show on the planet. Oh, and it also makes people millionaires. Thanks for watching.